In the previous video of this series, I showed you how to use an if block to execute a block of code conditionally. In other words, to decide whether or not to execute a block of code. The if block allows you to use one of the three constructs of high-level programming languages, namely selection. In this video, I want to say more about the if block and the kind of tests that we can perform with an if block. I've already created a new Windows Forms application and I've put three controls on the form. I have a label, a text box and a button. Notice that I've named the text box TXT exam score and I've named the button BTN get grade. The idea is that the user of this application will type in an exam score and then the program will calculate the grade. Let's write the code and see how we can use logical operators to build complex conditions. I'll start by capturing the score into a variable. I'm assigning the contents of the text box to an integer variable called iScore. Now the first thing I want to do is check whether it's a valid score. Let's suppose that you can only score between 0 and 100 on this test. There's a few things to notice here. I'm asking if the score is less than 0. This is the less than symbol. And let me be clear, less than 0 means minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. 0 is not actually less than 0. 0 is equal to 0. I'm also checking to see if the score is bigger than 100. Given that you can't score more than 100 on this particular exam, anything bigger than 100 would be invalid. If the score is less than 0, or the score is greater than 100, then we'll display a message saying this is not a valid score. I'm also giving the user of my application some guidance. I'm not just telling them what they did was wrong, I'm telling them what they should do instead, which is good practice for an error message. Then notice I'm exiting the program. I've put another line of code here just to prove the point. When we drop out of the if block, normally this line of code would be executed. But because I've said exit sub, this will force the program to stop there and then. Let's give it a try. If I type a score of, let's say, minus 1, this is not a valid score. I'm getting the error message. Let's try a score of 101. Again, not a valid score. Let's try a score of 99. And I want you to notice that we've dropped out of the if block and we're getting that message at the end of the program saying all done. It hasn't actually done anything yet. We'll deal with that in a moment. Just to be sure, I should really test the value 0. 0 is valid. 0 is a perfectly good value. And I should also test the value 100. And that's fine as well. So that's the beginning of my exam checker program, and I'm using something called a logical operator. The word OR is one of three logical operators which you'll come across. The less than symbol and the greater than symbol are called relational operators. That is the condition clause of my IF statement. And because it's effectively performing more than one test, we call it a complex condition. Now, before I try and work out what the grade for a particular score is, I'm going to keep it really simple and just test to see whether somebody has passed or failed. So, if the score is bigger than or equal to 50, it's a pass. If the score is less than 50, it's a fail. Notice the greater than or equal to symbol. That's another relational operator. Let's give it a whirl. A score of 45 is a fail. 
And notice all done is being displayed unconditionally. That's going to happen one way or the other. A score of 55 is a pass. Now it's good practice when you're testing a program like this to try all of the boundary values and by boundary values I mean 50 is a boundary, 100 is a boundary, 0 is a boundary. So let's try a score of 50. 50 is a pass. It's also a good idea to test parts of the program that we've already tested because when you add new code you might introduce bugs. So I'm going to test less than zero again. Minus 5 is not valid. And neither is 105. It seems to be working. Now you might have already noticed that I've used three separate if blocks. In the previous video I showed you one if block with multiple else if clauses and I'd like to point out the difference between the two. I'm going to set a breakpoint on this program and run it up again and we'll put in a failing score. Let's say 30 and now I'll step through the code. So we assign the contents of the text box to the variable. We check to see if the contents of the variable are within range. In this case they are, so we jump to the end of this if block. Then we check to see if the score is greater than or equal to 50, which it isn't. So we jump to the end of this if block and then finally we check to see if the score is less than 50, which it is, and we report that it's a fail. All done. Let's do that again, but this time I'm going to put in a passing score. Let's say 75. Assign the content of the text box to the variable. Check that it's in range, which of course it is, so we jump to the end of the first if block. Check to see if the score is bigger than or equal to 50, which it is. Report that it's a pass. And now we're checking to see if the score is less than 50, which of course is unnecessary. We're doing a test that we don't need to do. We've already established that it's a pass. To make my program more efficient, I'm going to use a single if block with multiple else ifs. My validation test, where I checked to see that the score was actually within range, I could have left as a completely separate if block. But don't forget, there was an exit sub in there, and it may well be that there's some code I want to execute unconditionally at the bottom of the program. If you use exit sub early on, that won't happen. So I've included this as well inside the if block with multiple else ifs. Let's give it a go. A score of 67 is a pass, all done. Let's step through it and watch what's happening. The score is in range. The score is bigger than or equal to 50, so we report a pass. And then we drop out of the if block. We don't need to do any more tests. So although it's perfectly reasonable to have multiple if blocks, each performing a separate test, it may be better to use a single if block with multiple else ifs, and then the program doesn't have to work as hard. Now admittedly with a little program like this, I'm not going to notice a lot of difference, but as you start writing longer, more complex programs, then small adjustments will add up and your program will run faster. Okay. It's one thing writing a program that works efficiently, but it also has to be robust. We want a program that you can't crash, and I can crash this one easily. Watch. I'm typing text into the text box rather than a number. 
invalid cast exception. Conversion from string 10 to type integer is not valid. This makes the point that when you type something into a text box, it's a string. There's the word 10 with double quotes around it. And I'm trying to put that string into a variable that's designed to hold integers, whole numbers. I'll run the program again with a breakpoint, but this time I'll be a well-behaved user. Notice that the text box contains the string 10. The text box does not contain a number. It's a string of characters. But because I'm trying to assign it to an integer variable, VB will attempt to convert it into an integer. And the string 10 can be converted into the number 10. So everything is fine. The program does not crash. The text 10 in double quotes has been converted into the number 10. Converting data from one type to another is called casting, and VB was able to do the cast. Let's run it again with something it can't handle. VB will attempt to convert the string FIVE into a number, and of course, that is an invalid cast. It can't do it. The last thing I want to do is give my program to a user who can inadvertently crash it. So let's add some extra code to get around this problem. Before I attempt to initialize the variable iScore with the contents of the text box, I'm going to test to see whether or not VB will be able to convert it into a number. Like this. Is numeric is a special built-in function which will allow me to test whether or not something can be converted into a number. In this case, I'm testing the contents of the text box. Let me be clear, it doesn't convert it into a number. It simply asks the question, can it be converted into a number? When I perform this test, the outcome will either be true if it can be converted or false if it can't. So I'm saying if is numeric, equals true, if it can be converted into a number, then I will do this line of code. I'm initialising the variable conditionally. If it can't be converted, then I give an appropriate error message, and I am exiting the program this time, because there isn't much I can do with that data unless it is actually a number. So there's my little validation routine. Let's give it a go. Type in some text. You must enter a number. And I'm not getting the all done message because I've forced an exit from the program. Now there's one more thing I can do just to improve the efficiency of the program a little bit. And that's to tell VB that I want to convert the contents of the text box into an integer rather than allowing VB to make the decision for me. And I can do it like this. C int is short for convert to integer. And of course my program is only going to do this if it can. I've already made sure of that with my is numeric test. If I left this out, it would still work, but I'm leaving it up to VB to decide what to convert the contents of the text box into. An integer, a double, a single, and it will make that decision based on the variable's data type. I'm just taking the decision out of VB's hands and it will result in a very slight improvement in performance. I'll talk more about special inbuilt functions in another video, but you've seen two already, isNumeric and cint.